Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Throughout human history, the one thing about warfare that has never changed is the importance of mobility. It's not surprising then for most of human history, the warriors and soldiers who were able to tame horses and ride them into combat oftentimes emerged victorious. Whether it was the ferocious steppe warriors who conquered half the known world, or the primitive but deadly Comanche warriors who held back colonization efforts for centuries in the Americas. Those who had the ability to outmaneuver their enemies usually won. But it wasn't just about riding horses, it was also about how you used them in battles. The Spaniards and Americans who fought against the Comanches also utilized horses. Hell, the Spaniards probably introduced the very horses the Comanches became experts at breeding and riding. But usually these foreigners who came onto Comanche land liked to ride around on horses but fought dismounted. The Comanches, on the other hand, liked to shoot arrows from horseback and were extremely efficient at it. The Saxons also didn't get the most out of their own horses as well. Their levy militias would ride to battle and then dismount. They were facing the Normans who brought their own professional cavalry units with them. Until the invention of reliable repeating firearms, cavalry units would dominate the battlefield. And in honor of that beautiful relationship between man and horse, today we're going to be giving you five of the best cavalry charges in movies that are actually based on true historical events. The average American's education is severely lacking when it comes to fine examples of horsemanship on the battlefield. This is especially true for those of you who didn't take that extracurricular class in Total War 101. And that's a shame because when people think of the ultimate cavalry force, the popular image is a heavily armored medieval knight or maybe something more fantastic like the Lord of the Rings. But if you were to ask a group of amateur historians and military experts who the most dominant cavalry units were in history, well, first they would break things down into categories probably. But many of them would mention the Polish Winged Hussars. Operating from the beginning of the 1500s to the late 1700s, the Polish Winged Hussars were probably the premier heavy shock cavalry units in the world at the time. And by shock, I mean these individuals were usually heavily armored and carried lances as a primary weapon, along with a variety of secondaries like sabers, horseman picks, and firearms. Thanks to Poland's ridiculous starting location on the map surrounded by many enemies and very strong militaries, the Hussars had plenty of battle experiences and performed feats that put other legendary historical military units to shame. For instance, they took the fight to Russia during the winter and won. Their actions actually lead to the start of the Romanov dynasty. And in 1683, during the Battle of Vienna, as the Ottoman Empire attempted to continue its conquest into Europe, the Polish wind Hussars would ride to the rescue and be a part of one of the largest cavalry charges in human history. The movie Day of the Siege is honestly not all that great, but it's one of the few films that showcases this awe-inspiring unit in one of their most pivotal moments in history. Also, I feel like a lot of stuntmen were killed in this movie because a lot of people get lanced off their horses and it's pretty awful to watch. The Polish King John III Sobieski arrives on the battlefield on September the 12th with all of Vienna surrounded by a massive force of Ottomans numbering around 143,000 men. Around 5 p.m. Sobieski leading a unit of 3,000 heavily armed winged hussars, which is a part of a larger group of 18,000 horsemen, charges at the enemy siege line. It's probably one of the most terrifying charges to be on the receiving end of. The telltale winged banners bolted onto the backs of their saddles made these heavily armored lancers appear like angels of death. 30 minutes later, the battle was over and Vienna was saved. So guys, no more Polish military jokes, it's just not very accurate. Now, if I were to ask you when the last cavalry charge was made in human history, you might assume it probably was some ill-advised glorious charge to the death by the English during World War I, or perhaps you're thinking about the spiritual descendants of Polish hussars charging against Nazi tanks during World War II. Well, what if I was to tell you that the last major cavalry charge was actually made in Afghanistan shortly after the events of 9-11? The first American boots on the ground that were sent after Osama bin Laden were a small team of CIA, Army Special Forces, and Air Force combat controllers. These individuals were embedded with a local group of Mujahideen fighters known as the Northern Alliance. These Mujahideen have been fighting against the Taliban and their Al-Qaeda allies for quite some time, and they adopted some very interesting fighting techniques using the limited resources available to them. 
The film 12 Strong is loosely based on the novel Horse Soldiers, which covers the exploits of these men. Because of the terrain of this part of the world, horses were the primary source of transportation, and soon the American Special Forces also adopted riding horses, although many members of the unit had never ridden before. During the battle for Mazer i Sharif, Northern Alliance fighters along with American Special Forces carried out a frontal assault using a mixture of pickup trucks and horses, stunning the ill-prepared enemy forces there and successfully took the city. That's one of the big problems with modern military forces. They just don't teach volley fire tactics anymore. It's not seen as something that's necessary. The machine gun rapidly changed the battlefield, as depicted in films like War Horse. The reality was most major armies still fielded cavalry forces during World War I and used them for scouting and maneuvering troops into position. When these horse soldiers arrived to the front lines, they usually fought dismounted. But the most impressive cavalry charge occurs on the Eastern Front, and once again, it's the Poles leading the way. This time, it's the Polish Legion fighting in the Austro-Hungarian Army. The Polish film Legion A follows the lives of several Polish Legion soldiers in World War I and leads up to their famous charge at Rakitna. A Polish squadron of 64 Yulans, modeled after the same Polish unit that was popular during the Napoleonic period, charged against prepared Russian lines armed with only sabers and pistols. It's assumed that the Russians had artillery and machine gun placements, and most infantry soldiers had bolt-action rifles. Yet somehow, this small unit, the Polish Yulan, took three rows of enemy trenches and caused massive casualties. Unfortunately, like the first few armored cavalry charges on the Western Front, these heroic charges were not supported with significant amount of infantry soldiers. Out of the 64 Ulans who carried out this crazy attack, only six would survive. So again, guys, don't make fun of the Polish military. We'll probably need them when the aliens invade. They're the only ones who could carry out a proper frontal assault on horseback. We talked about some amazing horsemen in this video, and next up we'll be talking about the Bedouin, who are not only amazing horsemen, but also capable of surviving the harsh desert climates of the Arabian Peninsula. The film Lawrence of Arabia is a classic epic that follows the life of T.E. Lawrence, a British adventurer, archaeologist, and army officer who helped unite the Arab tribes in revolt against the Ottoman Empire during World War I. He would adopt the culture and fighting style of the local Arab tribes and lead them in many amazing victories, including the famous attack on Aqaba. Aqaba was strategically located in an area in modern-day Jordan that was surrounded by mountains to the north and east and the Gulf of Aqaba to the south, which fed into the Red Sea. This was a very strategically important area, and Lawrence would travel 600 miles across the desert to reach there. During the assault, Lawrence of Arabia, along with other tribal leaders, would launch a multiple-pronged cavalry charge made up of horsemen and camel jockeys. The attack was extremely successful, and by the end of the day, Aqaba was taken, and the Arabs suffered only two casualties. Alexander the Great is known as one of the best military commanders in human history. And a huge part of his success depended on his ability to lead elite cavalry forces and utilize them in the correct way and at the correct time. Many historians attribute the hammer and anvil strategy to Alexander the Great, and that was because he utilized this technique with great effectiveness against his enemies on multiple occasions. The Macedonians used a special type of phalanx that featured ranks upon ranks of infantry soldiers holding pikes that were several meters long. These Macedonian infantry blocks were pretty much impenetrable against most infantry units and cavalry. Only elephants seemed to give them that many problems. Alexander would often have his phalanx engage the enemy and hold them in position. This was known as the anvil. Once the anvil was in position, Alexander and his companion cavalry would strike the enemy from behind like a hammer. This flanking effect was usually enough to break even the most hardened infantry forces. The film Alexander shows us just how capable this young conqueror is during the Battle of Guagamala. The Macedonians don't use the hammer and anvil attack during this battle, but what we do see is Alexander the Great's amazing intuition on the battlefield. As the Persian lines begin to thin because they're trying to outflank Alexander's own forces, they leave gaps in their center, which Alexander exploits using a massive wedge-shaped cavalry charge. No one knew better than Alexander when and where to charge the enemy and cause them to rout. 
So there you have it, guys. Those are five amazing cavalry charges that actually happened in real life, but are also depicted in these movies. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below because we're going to be doing more lists of awesome cavalry charges. We'll probably do a list of nonfiction movies. We'll also take a look at some very stupid uses of horses in combat. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next time. My name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.